Let's assume that we have a project that will last for three years. Our initial investment is 100 million and our free cash flow will be 40 million at the end of each year for the next three years. So we know that our discount rate is I, which is the same as cost of capital, which is the same as weighted average cost of capital. We know that our net present value formula is negative initial investment plus our cash flow in year one divided by one plus interest to the power one, which is the present value of the cash flow at year one, plus the present value of the cash flow at year two, which is C2, C refers to cash flow, divided by open bracket one plus in straight close bracket to the power two, because this is year two, plus the present value of the free cash flow in year three, which is C3 divided by open bracket one plus in straight close bracket to the power three. Therefore, related to this interest rate, can we rearrange this formula to put in straight in one side and all other variables in the other side? It will be hard to be done mathematically. Therefore, we can do this one in Excel. And we would like to know what will be the rate that will make our NBV equal to zero. And this is what we call as internal rate of return. So what do we mean by internal rate of return? This is our rate that will make NBV is equal to zero. Therefore, in order to calculate internal rate of return, let's use Excel. So here we have the year from zero to three, and we have at year zero, negative 100, at year 140, at year 240, at year 340. What would be our IRR? Press equal, write IRR, open bracket, highlight all cash flows from year zero to last year, close bracket. So this will give us an internal rate of return of 9.7%. We already calculated NBV before, and we just calculated IRR, which is 9.7%. Therefore, I know that if NBV is positive, which is 1.25 million, we discover that our IRR is bigger than WAC, which is 9.7% is bigger than 9%. Therefore, every time net present value is positive, our IRR must be bigger than WAC. I know that IRR is the same, it doesn't change, which is 9.7%. In the second scenario, when WAC is 9.7%, our NBV is zero. Our IRR is the same, which is 9.7%. Therefore, we discover that if NBV is equal to zero, IRR must be equal to WAC. In the third scenario, when WAC is 10%, our NBV is negative, 0.53, which is lower than zero. Our IRR is the same, which is 9.7%. So we discover that if NBV is negative, our IRR must be lower than WAC. Therefore, you need to know this relationship between all the budgeting capital budgeting tools, because these relationships must hold. Every time NBV is bigger than zero, IRR must be bigger than WAC. Every time NBV is equal to zero, IRR must be equal to WAC. If NBV is lower than zero, IRR must be lower than WAC. So can we make this relationship in a diagram? Yes. So our relationship here draws the relationship between WAC, net present value, and IRR. So here we have our x-axis, which is WAC, our y-axis, which is net present value. The point of intersection between WAC and NBV is zero. Above zero is positive, below zero is negative. And I know that the relationship between net present value and WAC is negative. Therefore, I will draw a downward slope. Then I will reflect the three scenarios. Here we have at WAC 9%, I will go up till I intersect with our curve, go horizontally. This will give us net present value of 1.25 million. So what's our decision rule? NBV is bigger than zero. Consequently, our IRR, which is 9.7%, is bigger than WAC. Our second scenario, our WAC is 9.7%. Our NBV is zero. What's our decision rule? If NBV is equal to zero, IRR must be equal to WAC. Our third scenario, we have a WAC of 10%. We will go down till we intersect with our curve, go horizontally, and then we'll have a negative 0.53. What's our decision rule? If NBV is lower than zero, IRR will be lower than WAC.